get houses. You know, I'm not going to sell my house. I love this fucking place as much as I bitch about it. That's why I bitch about it because I love this fucking house. And, um, and I'm going to continue to fucking repair it. And I'm going to do the fucking homeowner 360. And when I have the whole thing fixed, I'm going to start over again on the first job because now it's going to be fucked up. Uh, whatever I repaired at that point will then be fucked up. So anyways, I, um, there was this house for sale. And uh, I, went to go, I went to go see it. And it basically had everything that you, you could ever want. Right? It was a beautiful house. You know, from the outside. It was a beautiful house. It had a fucking pool. It had a garage detached from the house with a room above it, which to me is like, oh, there you go. I got the kid. I got the house with the, I got the garage with the fucking room above it. I put my drums up there, turn it into a drum room slash podcast room. There you go. That is my fucking dream. So I go over to go look at this fucking place, right? Knowing full well, I'm not going to fucking buy it. Because I can tell at this point, having bought a fucking house that needed all the work it does. But as, as I'm driving up to it, I can already see the fucking windows need to be replaced and it needs a new roof. Even though they told me, you know, we checked out the roof. There. We had some inspectors. They said it's fine. Oh, yeah. Is that what they said? Why are all these water stains all over the side of the fucking house? What's that about? I like how the windows don't fucking quite, they're not flush. Look at that. Look at the rot around all of those fucking windows. This house, I can tell you right now, is already a borderline teardown. And I haven't even gotten into it yet. So I walk into this fucking house and holy shit. Holy fucking shit, dude. I I took a tour of this house. There was three separate times that I thought I was going to get murdered. All right? First of all, we go to look at the room above the garage first, and there's just this, this moss growing on the side of the house, which I don't know if it was mold or if it was moss. It was fucking green. And um, the guy trying to sell it is, you know, he's doing his best, going, you know, it's a mother-in-law suite. You can fucking do this. You can do that. There's room to add a little more onto the garage. And I just point to the, I'm like, what is that? And he goes, yeah, well, you know, it need, need, definitely needs a little bit of work. <laughs> And uh, so I go into the house and there's this random guy living there who isn't the owner who has a pon- ponytail. It's sparsely furnished. It was made in the 1920s. So it's already like creepy. You can already feel how many people have lived there and are now dead. And uh, we just walk around the house. It got remodeled sometime in the nineties yet. It still had the fucking, uh, you know, Long Chaney Jr. vibe of it from the 20s. And uh, I go downstairs. It was like a basement, which they just don't have out here. And uh, the guy's like, he can make this into a TV room. And there was all like these fucking files and film and all this shit down there. And like, you know, that was the first time I was thinking about like uh, Saw or the Blair Witch. And I'm like, all right, uh, can we go back upstairs? So we go back upstairs. We go all the way upstairs. Then there was this random like teenage girl living there that was the daughter of the dude downstairs who wasn't fucking, who lives there, but I don't know, it's not his house. And we look up there and there's this stuffy fucking smell. And then as we go down to go to the master bedroom, they said, oh, the owner is, uh, the owner is, just to let you know, the owner is there. He's in the house, which usually they fucking leave. There's all these people just there and this fucking cat just sitting there looking at me. And I do the after you to go to the master bedroom and he does the after you to me. And then I didn't want to be rude. So now I'm walking towards the master bedroom down this creepy fucking Transylvania hall with the, the with the fucking the guy smiley real estate agent behind me who, you know, he's the I'm sitting there going like he's regular looking, good looking guy. That was to make me feel safe. And now I'm fucked and I'm walking towards this fucking door. And I open the fucking door and I look in there and I swear to God, there's this guy with like gray skin, totally fucking bald, like the landing strip. And then like, you know, like the little fucking uh, Mr. Whipple fucking hair around the side that he sort of died at some point. But now it was like this gray. He was totally gray. You could see the veins on the side of his head like Clint Eastwood, but not like I wouldn't want to fight Clint Eastwood. More like, did this guy die and then come back? And he was sitting down, hunched down. I think he was typing on the side of his bed. 
the place was a mess. And he just sort of looked over me and just went like, hey. He looked like the fucking dad in uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I was just like, what the fuck? So I went like, hey, hey man, how are you? I sort of stepped around him. And then when I went to look into the bathroom, which I did for fucking two seconds, you know, trying to feel the backside pressure, by the way. You know, like when a quarterback doesn't feel the rush, you know, trying to feel that fucking axe that was about ready to go into my back. I look into the bathroom and all along the bathtub, this guy had knee high dress socks drying on the, and I was just like, ah! and I was just like, all right, man, I'll fucking see, see you later. And I did, I like, you ever see that walk racing that, that, that was a big fad in the seventies. I did that right out of that fucking house. And I told, I said to the real estate guy, I go, Jesus Christ, I can see why this has been on the market for so fucking long. How the fuck are you supposed to sell it when the goddamn creep keeper keeper is, is, is creep keeper, or the crypt keeper. I'm like verbally dyslexic. Forget about trying to read. Um, it's sitting up there. I didn't dare look, you know, when I was standing there and I said all this shit. I know those old houses, you can hear everything when you're right outside. I was standing right underneath the fucking bedroom window, and I didn't dare look up there because I had a feeling he was going to be standing in the window staring at me, and I was going to have fucking nightmares. And, uh, and I just, I just, I fucking left. I left. And I have this creepy fucking feeling that because I went into that house, I got exposed to something. And at some point today, my home phone, which I never use, so it never fucking rings, is going to ring and I'm going to pick it up. And it's going to be that guy's voice going, seven days. And then I got to somehow expose somebody I know to it so I don't fucking die. Haven't said.